Twitter, you see people wishing death on people. So I just I can't relate to that culture. I'm like, well, how have we become this? Um, instead of canceling people, I think it's important to understand where uh, they're coming from or what their thought process was from. They're human. Sometimes they just make mistakes. You're dealing with feeling that you know you're not beautiful or you haven't got enough likes. You're not, you're not tall. You're not you know you don't have a good figure. And then somebody else just comes and cancels you, and then it becomes groupism, right? Hello and welcome to Sisterhood with me, Shelly Chopra. It's the show where we confront our challenges and confess our insecurities and together figure out what to do about them. On the show today, our spotlight is on cancel culture. Now, what is cancel culture? It is a way by which we cancel people out from our lives, from our social media, from offline relationships, from professional relationships, because we disagree with them or we feel that they did something that didn't work for us. But is cancel culture healthy? Is ostracizing someone based on an incident the one and only way to deal with people? If forgiveness is potentially the opposite of cancel culture, are we really becoming human beings who are looking at just one way of looking at things? We debate all of these various issues around cancel culture on the show today. On Sisterhood, always many voices on the issue, those who are in the middle of hearing this concept all the time. Joining me now is Prashasti Singh and Sherry. Uh, Prashasti is a stand-up comedian who has left her corporate life to take on comedy. And Sherry is an influencer. She looks at fashion. She looks at a lot of other aspects. So what women are up to, lifestyle and much more. Uh, thanks very much for joining us. Prashasti, I'll first come to you. This absolute wave of cancel culture that we are all, uh, you know, hearing, watching, seeing unravel. What's your take on it? I don't understand social media in the sense that it's necessary for my survival, so I have to be there. But every time I see something like this, where people reject people for uh, you know for a mistake that they've made, uh, it uh, really disturbs me. What do you think the cancel culture really means for uh, upcoming talent? I mean, at the end of the day, we are questioning uh, a large number of problematic issues on social. And this also envelops the entire ecosystem of comedy. What can cancel culture potentially do to rising talent? I don't have a clear answer. Of course, if someone has done something as bad as, you know, physically abusing or molesting a woman, of course, this person needs punishment. But what happens in this uh, social media justice court, a lot of times I feel is that there's a lot of impulsive reaction and a lot of, impulse, you know, a lot of immediate uh, need for action. And there is a reason why when, when the same thing is processed in a proper court of law and ideally in an efficient court of law, things take time because every problem has a nuance to it. So that's why even though I definitely, like you know, when the Me Too movement happened, uh, I saw so many stories coming out, it was very exhilarating in the sense that you know what, so many women are getting a chance to speak up. But I think around the same time when I saw people being so hateful to people and wanting to end their careers and their to some extent I've heard people you know, on Twitter you see people wishing death on people so I just I can't relate to that culture I'm like well, how have we become this uh, how is it that we who want good things we, we who want right to propagate or we who want people to be punished for their wrongs wish such horrible things for people and are so impulsive and jumping to conclusions so, but I also don't have an alternative solution for that. I've ha I was having a discussion with a friend uh, about, again, you know, Me Too and the related uh, cancel culture, you know. And I don't have an answer to what is the alternative given the way our courts function and given how difficult it is for women to go to go and register a complaint about sexual abuse. But I also know that this is also not the, not the ideal solution, right? Something has to be figured out which is more balanced. Sherry, what is your view on cancel culture? Um, I don't believe in cancel culture, which is something I see a lot now. And I just feel like um, it takes out the human from angle from everything. And we're not robots. Everybody is a human being at the end of the day. Uh, whether they are whatever the biggest celebrity in your eyes or whether they are, you know, um, just someone you see in your neighborhood, everybody is human at the end of the day. Sherry, in your opinion, what does cancel culture do to people, to their 
to their health, to their um, also also it's very unforgiving by uh, the very nature of it. I feel like everybody is going to make mistakes, right? It's not like, and they have over the years. It's just that now with social media, uh, everything has become so uh, current and so quick come out that people know of people's mistakes much faster than they did about 15 years ago. Um, and um, I just feel like we are more aware, we are more vocal about what we want in, um, you know, uh, people we look up to. So, for example, if you feel like um, someone you admire is doing a fairness cream campaign and that offends you, obviously people would be vocal about that, which people wouldn't have been about 20 years ago because there wasn't a forum or a platform for them to voice that opinion. With power, Sherry, comes responsibility as influencers and social media uh, important VIPs, so to speak. Do you think cancel culture must be dealt with extreme, extreme care? Um, instead of cancelling people, I think it's important to understand where uh, they're coming from or what their thought process was from. They're human. Sometimes they just make mistakes. And uh, it's okay to say that, okay, this person realized that they were wrong and, you know, it's fine, we all make mistakes. Um, it's just that I think when you're um, obviously a public person on a pub platform with a lot of people looking at you constantly, um, you do have to kind of somehow explain yourself, if not apologize at least, I think, uh, to people or to your audience uh, to help them understand why you did something that was wrong if you did it because I think it's really important to at least acknowledge people's feelings and say that, listen, this is what my thought process was. Um, I really didn't think of it like this and it may be turned into something else. There could be different forms of cancel culture. Some people like to call out, which means bunch of people who believe in a certain ideology, a certain thinking, a certain idea of a certain concept would go out there and call out somebody else for not uh, adhering to the principles of that idea. This is often adopted on social media by activists or people who certainly believe that they need to openly condemn by calling out. There's another conversation around cancel culture called calling in. Calling in is often around having frank and candid conversations about problematic behavior or action with somebody, but in a private space. So that's called calling in. There's also, of course, boycotting, which is a very central part of uh, cancel culture, where you could see that either a person or a company or brands are boycotted because certain people question their approach or their ideology or their behavior towards people. And then, of course, there is cancelling, which is possibly the most extreme aspect of cancel culture, which is to say that they are going to, as, as a collective or as a set of people, are going to question and um, perhaps shred uh, the reputation of a person online plus offline for what they've done, for how they've behaved. And that eventually has an impact uh, on livelihood of an individual uh, due to the kind of problematic perception he or she has or the harmful action or opinion they have displayed. Prasha, see, there's also the flip side, right? I mean, this is an opportunity for people to get together and call out problematic behavior. In that sense, that should be okay if people come together to question. Maybe that's the power of social media as well. I think uh, I really worry about young people because people like me have thick skin. <laughs> you know, like I have, I have worked in three offices. I have, uh, you know, you by the time you you worked in three offices, dealt with multiple bosses, you you sort of know how to hold your conviction and you know how to filter things that are nonsense. You know, like as a young intern, I would get affected by everything my boss says. As someone five years into the organization, I'm like, you know what? I, Three things he says make sense, two things don't make sense, that's just his ego, right? So, I have had the grooming, so I know I'm more equipped to be like, hey, bakwa, se, so, Like on my YouTube comments also, you know, I know what, what to take as feedback and what to... I know when it is just plain misogyny. But I worry for young people for whom this is their first career. Because this, this, this definitely can have a very very bad impact or very negative impact on their confidence and you know if I if I if, even if I have one person in my circle of influence, I would tell them that you know what you need to learn to filter or you need to you know find so much confidence in the art you are creating that these things don't affect you because these things will always be there you know like in office you always will have a bad boss even the good boss becomes a bad boss eventually <laughs> so you, the environment more or less will be some amount of toxic 
you know you need to find that confidence within you to hold it and like you know because it's a long run it's a, it's a game meant for people who like stay put and be at it so you need to find that conviction sherry what would you like to add to that uh, a lot of things i feel like now are coming out from like 15 years ago or 20 years ago also which is which is really sad because people have to actually pay for things that have happened ages ago and now it's like oh and i'm like you know it's done they probably apologized to the guy it's over it's like you know why 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 do this now to this person and cancel this person for something that's happened ages ago um so i think this whole cancel culture is a really terrible thing and it's really scary i think for most people which is why um they feel like imagine like when you've worked on a on a platform or worked in a career for years on end one mistake is kind of you know going to put an end to that um is obviously really scary for people which is why i think a lot of people are being less and less vocal um and just kind of like you know sitting uh, on the sidelines because they're scared of what people are going to say or think and that's really sad because i feel like we should be able to communicate freely we should be able to share our thoughts without being afraid of constantly being you know uh like judged or cancelled and i think it should be okay for people to make mistakes as long as they acknowledge those mistakes um and you know know what they did wrong and moving forward plan not, not to do those things um i think that's what's more important than just saying oh you know this person made a mistake let's cancel them and let's delete them from our lives and let's like i just feel like that uh that whole vicious culture needs to end thank you both for joining us i think we got um I'd like to bring out uh, on sisterhood one important aspect about cancel culture. Neither are we here trying to prescribe it and nor are we here to suggest that it's uh, it's wrong. We are debating many aspects of cancel culture and bringing you different voices on what this entire terminology is doing to people and the kind of impact it's having on them. Have a look at some of the other voices that we brought on the show. on cancel culture so netra thanks so much i'd like your perspective as well on cancel culture and what you think is that doing to the way our entire social timeline functions i think everybody has to decide what they want to be now if they want to be some kind of a mass person that they want to be a mass personality and they want to be someone who is who has an influence of over a large number of people then i think that they have to be very careful they are very careful about the fact that what am i saying how do the people that are, my community that i cater to what how do they take it is it something which is getting retweets or not is my video getting lots of play or not i think that becomes a huge consideration for them right and i think that shelly there is a fear of that happening with journalists as well because you know what if you say something and very only a thousand people seem to like it then what is the point of you then where is the validation from now the and i'm saying this only to tell you that at the moment i'm in a comfortable place where i already work for a mass media kind of platform so i work for a paper which uh, which has a digital presence as well and it's not my job to be liked by everyone so from this position which is a comfortable position where i don't have to be liked by everyone i have the luxury of saying i'm just going to say what feels right to me it doesn't matter what people think so for example um you know and i've always thought that the brave thing to do is to just even if it sounds like i should know or it sounds like a very simplistic question which some people say what a dumb question if it's there in my mind because look i've been a journalist for 21 years so obviously i've been trained to do this this is the only thing i know what to do and i have to ask the questions which other people may be asking so i just use my every time i approach a story or every time i look at a news i'm always looking at it as a news consumer as well so i'm not afraid of saying that yes of course it's nice if i have an opinion if i have a if i write a piece and Uh, like a million people read it or 2 lakh people read it i i don't think any a million people have read my pieces or uh, definitely not read my books but uh, it's great if they you know everyone shares it and my article goes viral it's great it really is i have to admit it is a validation but the thing is that at the end of the day 
you know it's not very easy to have it's not it's it's a huge it's a huge bother to keep thinking what should i say that people will like that's not my job no my job is just to say how it is in your assessment what is this going to lead us to you know a lot of people they say things and they say that oh that the liberal crowd isn't liking what you've said but that's not my job i just have to say how it is i just what is my job my job is i'm a political editor my job is to look at politicians all kinds of politicians see what is interesting and look at the thing maybe i'm not saying that everything i say is correct but i do have a solid explanation for every story i do yeah i do have a solid explanation so as long as i'm able to do that everyone takes a wrong news call but as long as you have a solid reason and rationale for taking that news call or taking that or doing a particular story then i think you're fine it's just that everything can't be according to you know none of that has to be according to what people want to hear because then you're just not going to get it right because then you're really giving people what they want and then what's the point of that because the point of that and and actually the truth is that people do actually want to hear what they're thinking so people but then shelly the problem is you're not going to surprise people what is the point of writing an opinion piece or writing an article if everybody already knows and feels that you know and those are the ones that get promoted the most or are shared the most but the reality is that our job is to tell people what they don't know anuja chauhan a best selling author also pays a lot of attention to what's going on around her world especially in this world of social media and the way people are changing their attitude here is anuja's take on cancel culture the point is that public memory is so short right tomorrow there'll be mm. one more thing and then your the fact that you got cancelled yesterday everyone will forget by day after tomorrow so i i would just look at that a little optimistically and you know like how people say life is short life is not short life is long there are many innings there are many laps you can keep coming back you can be relevant again you can uh, people like this the second coming the third coming the fourth coming of uh, politicians of actors even actresses today right people keep coming back and you're saying oh go oh, look who's back who's been confirmed for a fourth season fifth season uh, so i think that i think the phrase cancel culture is like an exciting phrase that people have now really got into but i don't think that i think you can always come back and have another bash look at monica lewinsky for example having an amazing new innings in this time you know that, that is like the ultimate person who was ultimately cancelled and uh, she's so relevant she's so loved people are listening so i think that uh, uh, so yeah like i said joining me now is jyotsna bhargav an author and columnist uh, her book has uh, done in depth understanding of what uh, drives today's teens what are their struggles what are their successes how do they deal with social peer pressure how do they deal with substances and so on and so forth uh, jyotsna thanks very much for joining us um, on sisterhood so first up what has been your investigation like uh, you know especially uh, to do with social pressure peer pressure because today we're discussing cancel culture which is sort of one side of the coin of the same issue you know i find it a very scary phenomena actually if you ask me given the kind of as you said the peer pressure the, the children are under anyways and you know the kind of environment we are in today and that's totally been compounded by the pandemic having to you know stay inside and just be constantly online so i i find that you know to be in that space as it is with that pressure that you know you you not light or you don't get those kind of likes or you know you, you you aren't part of the cool gang and suddenly someone just says you're cancelled and, and and in their uh, you know in 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 their universe cancelling means you're completely out and from where the children see themselves it's like i don't you know they feel like that's it it's done they don't they don't look at the longer picture they don't consider it temporary they don't consider it a phase they consider that it is done everything because everything is in the moment anyway shall we you know everything in social media everything in their culture is momentary and validation is momentary gratification is momentary so the cancel culture is also momentary and i i find that you know the kind of impact it does on the health is just huge because they are anyway trying to cope with just so many things today they're trying to cope with the, uh, you know a uh, being part of the cool gang they're trying to cope with kids who get phones to school at a young age and they don't have it there's just so much to conform 
and and it can be the silliest of things and the stupidest of things you know that will cancel them out or because you know they didn't get the phone or they won't part and and then they're not taken you know or they didn't get junk to school which i see a lot of you know some yeah. parents who may not send uh, the doritos or the crisps every day every every day to school or you know chocolates and the kids say that you know we we can't share we can't share because others don't share and so we we'll cancel out it's as simple and as lame as that but in that uh, in in what the children are going through today i think it has enormous implications and it impacts their health it impacts their mental health enormously i find what do you think this is doing to the mental health of young people today this this constant feel that i don't want to say something that hurts another friend some cases that might be the truth uh in other cases just this desire to constantly meet or live up to somebody else's expectations Oh, I think it's I think it's huge, and I I've been saying this all along that you know we don't look at how mental health affects our young, and uh, you know we we're constantly a uh, we're constantly uh, Shelly we still don't talk about it with the adults so you know young young are not even uh, you know in the peripheral vision of ours when it comes to mental health and uh, I and it's really sad because I think 13 to uh, 18 or 15 to 18 it's the largest cause of suicide in the country so those uh, statistics are very damning and yet uh, you know and and unfortunately what I saw during the book was also that every little thing triggers them off and uh, any anything you know and and the one constant question that I asked most of these children going you know who I spoke with for the book and I spoke to many many children was that why do you have constant angst why is there so much sensitivity why you guys always always on edge and this cancel culture takes it further you know i mean they've got their own issues they're dealing with cancel culture comes from the outside right so you've got your internal factors you're dealing with your own stuff that's going on you're dealing with feeling that you're not adequate you're dealing with feeling that you know you you're not beautiful or you haven't got enough likes or you're not, you're not tall if you're not you know you don't have a good figure and then somebody else just comes and cancels you and then it becomes groupism right so it's 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 in a sense it, it's no different from bullying and you you know you you get you gang up to cancel out one person who may have anyway got issues you know you may anyway be uh you know and we be struggling to conform with the rules of cyber media and social media and so what happens eventually is that some of them you know get to self harm some of them you know become reclusive while others i think they take uh, the advantage of anonymity and then they strike back right and yeah. they strike back it, through that anonymous uh, lens of anonymity and you know they may upload something against somebody or they may talk you know th- that uploading the news or uploading videos is so common today so i think it depends on how a child will react to that and i think again it comes back to societies it comes back to children to parents more than children to schools how we introduce them to the cancel culture because i mean it is a reality in today's times how much of this should be a uh, discussed at home uh how relevant is the conversation with parents on these issues because most children young people like to keep this hush hush you know it's like a part of the gang it's not a conversation that needs to happen with parents uh are, are they are they parts of your book which uh, dealt with those oh absolutely i find <laughs> most of the things that concern the children right i mean even from body shaming what is body shaming it's a phase it's in your mind it's not because it's not tangible shall they don't think that you know it's something they can deal with and even bullying for now it's it's something they'll be like oh it's it's a phase in school you'll get over it right unfortunately bullying has diversified into cyber bullying sexual bullying girl on girl bullying so everything everything is you know we have to take a step back and we have to catch up and i say that for social media and i say for all these terminologies and i say for the digital world that you know for us, for us adults i don't think it's enough to just say oh our kids are digital you know are di- digital savvy and oh they know everything and you know they they'll take get the hang of it and we said very proudly right but i don't think it's enough i think we are so busy playing self the selfie game ourselves as parents and as you know we're we're experimenting with it ourselves right with social media that we we haven't upped our game and i think that is very crucial and oh sure i mean you're talking about the cancel culture i'll tell you words like grooming which is so critical for parents to know today especially when you know the boys are gaming extensively and i've had so many conversations and everybody is turned around said oh, what is grooming you know what is it i mean we only know apart from uh, where you look nice and wear good clothes and i'm horrified because your child is gaming 10 10 hours and you have no concept of grooming 
but again we dismiss it, it, it it's again it's the same thing I, I, you know shall we, we don't take privacy seriously we don't take those. so so there's just so much that is there for us to learn for us to up our game if we want to make this you if we want to make it a better place for our children today because things are shooting constantly from that space and everything is new and you know i mean there's a new lexicon every other day for these children to cope with and i was asking my daughter this yesterday after you know we had the conversation and i said how many uh, you know how many people around you how many parents know about uh, cancel culture she said mama i doubt anybody does there you have it cancel culture is clearly a concept that's still in motion we're all grappling with it we're understanding it far better every single day social media is a big reason why cancel culture has sort of got this sense of virality but it's a term that's here to stay because we're likely to see it go beyond the social media space to an offline world whether it's politics to finance it's about influencer behavior to parenting all of this is a conversation we need to keep on top of our table debate it question it just as much as we choose to follow it so that's the end of this episode but remember to join us every friday for a new episode of sisterhood click on that bell icon and you will have a notification when a new episode goes out thanks so much for joining us follow our youtube channel and me on instagram @theradeshellychopra see you